Hi there. Welcome to Cargo Film Presents. I'm Dave. And I'm Dan. And Cargo Film Presents, we talk documentary films. And uh, this week we will be talking about, am I correct in saying, I think I forgot, but uh, can I say this is an Academy uh, shortlisted film, documentary film for 2021? Yes, it's the, it, hit, it hit the double, right? Hit the uh, best international feature shortlist right. and best documentary. That's right. Best. Uh, so it's on the shortlist for best international and best documentary. The film is The Mole Agent, a Chilean film, and uh, can be described as a film noir documentary. Yeah, you don't say that every, that. every week. Yeah. Um, that looks at an 83 year old uh, man named Sergio Shami, who goes undercover in a Chilean nursing home, uh, which becomes, which morphs into a warm hearted look at age and intimacy. A mí me está contratando una hija. Cree que a su madre adentro la están maltratando, que le están robando. Entonces tú vas a hacer mis ojos. Yeah. Todo me sí. sirve. Los baños están asquerosos, que la enfermera, pa, cachuchazo, pa, y espobazo. So, uh, yeah, what did you think, Dan? Yeah, you know, I, I really enjoyed this film. Um, yeah. You know, it's it, it, initially... When I was reading about it, you think, oh, an, a film about old age and elderly people mm. in a sort of nursing home. Well, that's going to be a very hard watch. Uh, right. But then you say film noir and you say private investigator, <laughs> an undercover story. And oh, now, I, now I'm intrigued. And, and um, you know, from right from the beginning, it just it had a kind of lovely uh, charm to it. And uh and I think, as you mentioned, this this morph that takes place mm. sort of in the middle of the dock, this transformation of the film, I, I think is what really makes it special and unique. So we, we, sh we should say that, uh, you know, as you said, it, it starts out as um, a private investigator hires Sergio to go undercover because one of the private investigator's clients thinks that um, her mom is being abused inside the home. And so mm. it's, you know, we need to... He needs surgery. Needs to get in there and, and get some evidence of uh, of some of this stuff happening. Um, so right. that's sort that, of, that's a pretty serious allegation. It say. is, yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so yeah, so he sends Sergio in there, who's I think what eighty three or he turns yeah, 83, 83 in the film to oh, okay. uh, yeah, that's to right try, to try and collect some evidence. So at first that's quite funny, you know. He goes in there and he's he's a little bit. Um, uh, He's a star, uh -oh. but he he's is. a star. Yeah, but he's a little bit too aggressive. <laughs> he's poking around too okay. much, and the private investigators telling him to like back off a little bit. Back so off. He's, well, he's, he's just taking it. The, the guy's you know been long retired. He's taking his job seriously, you know, and uh, and and goes at it with gusto. <laughs> he really does. He he starts just opening up people's rooms, just walking yeah. in and <laughs> asking right. questions. It's quite hilarious. The, yeah. the whole beginning. Um, and uh, and finally, he does find the woman inside the nursing home um, who uh, who suspected of being abused, and he tries to get to know her, but he you know he's uh, he he struggles a bit. She's a tough She's a tough to customer. <laughs> Um, uh, and he also gets distracted while he's doing, as you said, he becomes sort of the star of the nursing home because I think there are there about 40 women and like That's right. four men in the nursing Correct. home. So, so of course, Sergio is, is, is they're all impressed. Time. They're all impressed with how lucid he is too. Yeah, that's right. He's so <laughs> and he's quite a gentleman. He's a caballero. Yes. They keep calling him. Yes, yes, yes. He's really, really Dressed as well. And, and, and yes, the women are smitten. And a great listener, I think, is also part of what that's right. know, makes Sergio. Um, yeah. You know, well, that's great. you know, that's a secret. Uh, you know, everyone should learn for sure. And uh, and, uh, and then we should say well, it does take a it does take a, a, a twist there uh, after mm -hmm. the uh, about in the middle of the film. You know, as he's trying to collect this evidence, uh, he starts to get to really know the uh, the, the residents there and, and form mm -hmm. these sort of bonds and relationships. And you get little mini portraits of some of the, the women in the residence there. And and it kind of becomes something else. It's no longer a, a film noir, no longer an investigation into whether, um, you know, this, this woman has been abused or not in, in there. Although we do learn mm -hmm. that uh, one of the residents is stealing from her. Right. Uh, but uh, but that's not really the focus of the of the second half of the film, where more of the the pathos of the film comes through. Yeah, I, I think that's where something really interesting happens in in this film. You know, the films and the story kind of becomes almost you know 
directed as much by Sergio as it is the filmmaker Maita uh, Alberti, who is the credited director of the film. Like Sergio seems to kind of start taking control of the story as he starts to a you know rebel against the situation he's he's in. You know he starts missing home and and and, and so on. The fact that the private detective keeps giving them gruff and instructions and, and he starts re to react to that. And, I, I, and then you get the feeling that he starts to react to the, the lie that he's perpetrating in his home as he get to, gets to know, know, uh, you know the other residents. It's, it's kind of like a, becomes a, a Sergio rebellion at, at some level, you know, it, he kind of, it, the film then suddenly becomes about the things that Sergio is interested in, which is ultimately the well-being of the, the people in the home. And it forces the filmmakers to focus on their well-being as well, rather than what was the uh, original premise of the film, this whole investigation, which really turned out to become an afterthought, you know, 20 minutes in. And um, so it, it's, it's almost like this eight, old 83-year-old man wrestled control of the story from these young people and in, if, in his... Um, you know, uh, infinite, infinite wisdom and compassion says, let's stop playing games here. Let's, let's look at these, you know, poor, lonely people, how sad they are. And, and let's think about perhaps, you know, caring a little bit about them, like not, not necessarily the filmmakers, but the viewers and to the family members of these elderly people who all seem to be forgotten by their family members. You know, it's, it's kind of a sad state of affairs. It is. Yeah. You're completely right. I mean, that's the, the same feeling that I got was that, you know, yes, it set up this cinematic trope of the, the film noir, the investigation, but really it wasn't interested in solving that, as you said, because of, you know, Sergio and his own, uh, uh, his own kind of investigation, or rather him getting to know these residents and listening to them. And, and it's just this wonderful reversal, although mm -hmm. sad that you get, you know, how lonely these people are. And, you know, it's not that the the staff is abusing them or that there's anything wrong with the no. home. Actually, it seems no. like quite a good home. It's the fact, yes. as you said, that the family members and, and us who have forgotten, you know, the, the elderly and, and our, our relatives in these homes, and we just, um, yeah, yeah, we just have forgotten them. I mean, there's one just really, really sad and moving scene where one of the residents, I think, hasn't had a visitor for a mm. year, over a year, and she hasn't seen her family. Mm -hmm. So Sergio gets the investigator to find pictures of her family and smuggle them into <laughs> the home. And then Sergio presents these to the woman and she gets to see her family in these pictures for the first time. And she's, you know, it's, she's crying and it's incredibly moving. And yeah, yeah it's just a really poignant scene. And, and, and that really what is what becomes the, the heart of this film and the lesson of this film is, you know, the, the fact that we we throw these people out in the, into the homes and forget about them, go about, go on with our lives, and and uh, you know they need us. And it just made me think even more during these times of yeah. COVID how hard it must be for you know for people in in nursing homes and old age homes at this time that have no contact from from friends or family or the outside world. How, how yeah. isolated they must be feeling. Yeah, the elderly for sure during COVID have uh, certainly been some of the hardest hit and, and uh, we, we, we forget that. So, you know, Sergio does us a service that reminds us, you know, to, to, to not forget, you know, um, and, um, and that's why you, you got to love Sergio, you know, as, as a subject, as a character. And, um, you know, that's also when the, 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 the premise starts to feel like a bit, a bit of a setup, this whole investigation thing. Yeah. And, you know, even the idea that the film crew is already in the home when Sergio uh, arrived, you know, because the crew had, had lied about documenting life in, in this nursery home. Um, so the home didn't know that Sergio was planted there, you know, as a, as a spy. But even in, in that scenario, you know, having a crew there kind of defeats the whole purpose of actually having uh, uh, someone investigating abuse. I mean, it just may, would make you think that that kind of abuse probably wouldn't be going on if there's a film crew walking around the premises, you know, as well. You know what I mean? So it, it just, you know, I, I'm so glad it morphs into something uh, substantial and and um, and uh, thought provoking and poignant, because I, I feel like if it hadn't that that you know I don't think there would have been a, a long form feature film here. Um, so so I'm thankful to Sergio. Um, 
And I, I don't particularly like the ending scene. If you recall, it's, it's, um, it's, it's a scene where Sergio kind of exits the home with some of the residents at the gate and up on the, the balcony looking on. And um, it, it's just a little uh, unusual because he, he meets the private investigator and they're still playing the roles of family members as when they first entered the home and they give each other a big hug. And uh, I don't know, I just feel at that point, Sergio's kind of done with this, the charade yep. and a whole exercise, but he still has to pretend. And I just kind of hope that he kind of just, you know, regrets having done it in the first place, you know, and, and, and was kind of saddened to have, you know, kind of experienced this. Like, damn, you know, I, I, I thought I was going to have fun here and had a job, but, um, you know, it was all for naught. And um, I, I also wish they had him speak at the end, you know, to, to have him reflect on the experience. And I wonder why that didn't happen. And maybe it's just, just didn't happen and that's okay but in the back of my mind with all this stuff going around I can't help but think you know he didn't want to have anything to do with it anymore he's like I'm done you guys right, right. You, have your, you have your story you have your film you know I'm, I'm done with this yeah I did I did also uh hope that there would have been another scene or something where he was with his family I mean I know we do see him with his uh I think daughter-in-law and son or, yeah they visit on but you point. know yeah once the charade the investigation is now over you would have liked to see them back and see what you know i, I don't know it would just seem like another opportunity for you know the story and, and, and for and for an emotional yeah. moment because it, yeah it did leave on end on kind of an odd note there <laughs> it did it's a little unusual like about by, by that point sergio's I don't think he's feeling so much warmth toward the private investigator. You no, know? yeah, you didn't want him to, you know, reunite with the private investigator. No. <laughs> you wanted to reunite with his family. That's or, right. You know, maybe see him, you know, I don't know, some time had passed and he goes back to visit or, you know, under different circumstances and, you know, right. somehow break that that wall of the yeah. you know, investigation and him being the, the mole agent. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah, that's that that, that was unfortunate. Um, but you know there there are amused there's some times especially in the first 30 minutes where this feels like a narrative film you know I, I, you know i can see this being remade as a narrative as well you know yeah, but yeah. Uh, uh there are these amusing uh, scenes of sergio being like this mini celebrity in the, in the home and his uh, leather jacket his... yeah he's wearing a leather <laughs> jacket uh you know they throw him a birthday party and he's the king of the ball or whatever it is uh you know, there and there's this really squirm-inducing uh, scene uh, with this woman who had professed her her love for um, for Sergio, and he's got to awkwardly thwart her, and and uh, you know, and um, you know, just feel for the guy that he he's like back in the schoolyard having to go through this stuff, uh, but he but he does it delicately and and well, and and the, the woman understands, so it all works out, but. Uh, but, you know, so those elements are, are, are very enjoyable, certainly, uh, in, in the, that first part of the film, uh, before it kind of, you know, uh, turns into something else. Yeah, and, and I also particularly liked that scene. I mean, it was, it was another moving scene when one of the residents does pass away towards the end mm -hmm. of the film. Um, and she is known for greeting new residents with a poem. And so mm -hmm. they read a poem uh, and they recite the poem that she reads to the residents uh, at her funeral, um, which is a poem about, about mothers, you know, mm -hmm. and it just, yeah, it just sort of reminded you of, um, the importance of, you know, because the home is, is mostly women, just, you know, you just think about all of these women who are living these homes or sent off to these homes and forgotten and, you know, just yeah. a, a real remind, a poignant reminder of that. Um, and, and really sort of beautifully done. It's, it's not like didactic or anything, but you just, you know, you suddenly get this point like, right. You know, like <laughs> it's, these homes are, you know, probably mostly filled with, with women, you know, who have committed to their, their lives, to their families, um, you know, in service to their families for so many years and then their families <laughs> just forget about them you know at right. the end of their lives it's really yeah it's really yeah hard. it's yeah. you know something that you hear in like certain cultures where the the elderly are uh, a little bit more uh, taken care of and or um celebrated for lack of yeah. a better word you know uh certainly in in uh, north american culture yeah we don't we don't see any of that and um you know 
um, I know that after I, I watched that movie, I, I wanted to call my parents, you know, because uh, because I felt uh, guilty that yeah, you know, I mean, I think I do a fairly decent job of of uh, staying in touch, but but it just reminds you that you know when you get to that uh, age uh, with your, your you know uh, months days or, or couple few years left, you know, yeah, that kind of connection with others becomes so it becomes everything it becomes yeah. everything and it's a reminder of that so it uh i'm, I'm glad for for sergio to have uh, shared that with uh, with us thank you sergio yes sir sergio A los 18 horas estuve vigilando para que le dieran el remedio y no se lo dieron. Ahí no, de no. acá. Llore, llore. No se le hace bien, llore nomás. <risa>